film is much different than music and like there is a very 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 like particular craft that go that goes into it and so you know i wanted to make sure i went to went to school and learn that craft hey guys what's good welcome to the cosign life if you're watching this video that means you co-sign us and we co-sign you so here are a couple of ways to support us at cosign magazine number one view the description below click the link and purchase an issue of cosign magazine it's like this this one right here physical you can purchase this Number two, you can also support us by purchasing Cosign merch. Hit the link below and it'll take you to all our past merch items and we'd love to have your support and see you wear Cosign Magazine. many layers man like <laughs> man, we can go way 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 <laughs> you know what i'm saying it's like bro the starting point like there's so many different starting points man it uh, really is yeah because you was on the real estate game early before it became you know before it became yeah yeah <laughs> i don't want to say a trend but before it came popular you know what I'm saying? Before it became facts bro facts yeah, was on it early man so let's let's start there bro like we're where did this creative entre entrepreneurial mindset come from early on? Because when I was met you and you know, you was already up, like you was ahead of the curve. So where did that mind frame come from? Yeah, bro, it, it came from my family for sure. Like um, you know, my grandparents, <laughs> I could go wait, my, gran my grandmother's grandfather was a sharecropper. Okay. The land he worked on, the, 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 the people who owned it, the family who owned it, when the guy passed away, the patriarch passed away, he left some of the land to my grandmother's grandfather. This was in Virginia. Okay. The, go the government came in, took the land for like pennies on a dollar, gave him some money. So he went to DC and bought up a bunch of property in DC. And so uh, over time, you know, the family didn't kind of like keep like keep it how they should have been. And you know, we we fa we fall into those pitfalls because we, you know, as black people. Sometimes we we gotta learn, right? Like we gotta learn through experience because sometimes we're not just given the game. Um, so, but he was the first one of, of his family who did that. And so my family, my grandmother always talked to me about the importance, like, yo, my grandfather, this is what he was trying to do. You know what I'm saying? Like it, 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 it might not have taken off how he envisioned it, but that's what he was trying to do. He, she always told me that. And so, um, yeah, bro, I kind of just took that. So once I hit, shit, once, once I hit undergrad, I was like, all right, I was just super disciplined. I'm like, I'm gonna save all undergrad. That way, as soon as I graduate, I could buy my first joint. And so um, that's kind of where it started. And you know what I'm saying? It's like, and you know, that's a blessing that I had a grandmother to be like, yo, hey man, you need to look into that property shit. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, that's 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 where it that's that's really where it came from. Right. So started in DC, and then yeah. uh, even when I know there's some some time between them, but even when y'all came to Dallas, y'all was already yeah. ownership. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all already. Uh, How many properties y'all had when y'all moved to Dallas? So when we got to Dallas, we just had the one in DC. Okay. And then um, it's crazy, bro, because so I, I had actually been planning my move. See, this is 2000, 2014. Mm -hmm. In 2014, I started planning my move to LA, okay. like in 2014. And right. I was looking at properties, I was like, all right. How can I get there in five years? That was my, my that was my thought in, in 2014. Okay. We went to Dallas because my godbrother uh, Nate G, who was in Dallas, who I do music, you know, who SOS, who I did music with. Right. We went there first, and of course, my wife. Well, at the time, she was she was my girl, Milana. Yeah. She was like, um, she from San Diego, right? And so she's like, I'm not trying to move to Dallas, Texas. <laughs> like point <laughs> point point blank, right? Like we met in, we met in D.C. She went to Georgetown. I went to Howard. She was like, I'm not trying to move to Dallas, Texas. I was like, well, look, the plan is to get to LA ultimately, but if we, if we spent just two, I told her, I was like, let's just do two years in Dallas and let's get property there. Flip, like I, I gave it a whole shit. Like I gave it a whole game. And she was like, all right, that sounds like a, that sounds like a decent plan. And so literally bro, like everything we did in Dallas was in service of moving to LA. You see what I'm saying? So it's like playing chess a little bit. Every move was intentional. It was very intentional. And so when we got there, um, you know, my whole thing being from DC, being from an area where it's heavy, heavy Metro, like Metro rail, my whole thing was always, and I did the same thing out here in LA, but I'm always looking for 
where the next met metro rail is going to be or the next bus stop. Like I'm always looking, I'm, I'm kind of following the metro, right? right? So when we got to Dallas, uh, I seen that they were doing everything down there in Bishop Oz. They was building a new metro line to connect to, to downtown and all of that. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know shit. So I just happened to be like, well, that's where they're building the metro. Let's go there. And then sure enough, right. it, it kind of popped off. And so when we got to Dallas, we had three joints. We had, so when we, we had to join the DC, we got to Dallas, we got three more. And okay. then, um, and by the time we left Dallas, we had, you know, we had those three properties and then, and then moved out here. Man, that's crazy, bro. And then all, <laughs> and at this time too, man, I want to say it was, you, you invested in a studio in, uh, was it DC or Oklahoma? Where's the studio at? It, so it, we had two locations and we still, we still have the one in DC. And that was, so the property I had in DC okay. is where we have Studio 12. And okay. Studio 12 was real big in Oklahoma City. Um, and I did that with a business partner out there. I don't know. This, in Oklahoma City, it kind of said that had, had a little bit of issues. It was in deep in hot Oklahoma City, and they they had some shit happen, and it kind of kind of fucked all of that up. But we still have it in DC, Studio Twelve, okay. um, and that's the so the spot I had in DC. And that's the other that's the other part of the game too. Like the residential is dope, but the commercial shit is really is really dope too. And so I had a, we had a commercial joint in Dallas, and we had the commercial joint in DC with Studio Twelve. Um, yeah, commercial spot. And then most recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, remember the joint that you came, I think you actually came to the joint one time when we came in through the back. We ended up leasing that as a commercial space. It became a, um, it became a massage, a massage, uh, I remember. like parlor or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and so, but the commercial shit, you know, you, you can hit heads on the, on the lease, on the lease price. So, so yeah, we still got Studio 12 in DC. Most recently, we had the same business partner I got Studio 12 with. We had a restaurant in D.C. that kind of went under. In fact, you remember uh, Chef Cicero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, the cage birds or something like that? Cage, exactly, the hey, cage hey. bird, the cage bird. So we had that joint at DuPont Circle in D.C. And then again, with COVID and everything, that joint kind of took a dive. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. But, yeah. but yeah, man, I think, um, you know, it's... Like you said, it's becoming it's becoming really really popular now, which is good. Like it's good. Like when people like you got DJ, you know DJ Envy who's always pushing it, or you got you know all these different podcasts popping up talking about it, um, and it's great. Like it should it should be popular um, because at the time, because you know me and you connected because you also you also was a homeowner at the time too. You know what I'm saying? There's only a few of us that I knew at the time who was like doing that, and it really sets you apart. It gives you a, it gives you a little bit of a leg up as far as like uh you know financial freedom depending on how you how you crunch the numbers right like if you if you buy in a spot and you you know your mortgage is less than some people's rent right and then you got you know a room you could rent out and make more you know passive income it's like it's a bunch of ways to finesse the shit so it should be popular and so um you know people don't know people don't really know that that i did the whole real estate shit like uh -huh. um but i'm always down you know i'm always down to chop about it <laughs> yeah, no nah, man see i think uh for me, what stood out, what stood out for me about you, man, was how many layers there are to you. And, and and you remind me of another one of my friends named uh I am my photo. That's his Instagram. But y'all, y'all two are people who who can do many different things, but y'all can do it all at a high level, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Appreciate a lot of that, bro. Who spread themselves out, but then like each each uh each vertical, they're they're not at the they're not at the top at it because they're spreading themselves thin. Man, but with real estate, uh, with the music, film, writing, directing, bro, it's like, man, you don't miss. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> thank so, you, thank you, bro. Yeah, so it's crazy having this conversation with you because you know we're definitely friends, bro. But there's a lot of stuff I still don't know about you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm eager to learn. So you know, we touched on the real estate side, but with you being super intentional, I know you were trying to get to LA because film industry, correct? Yep. yep. So when, when when did that spark an interest with you in your life that you was like, yo, I really want to be into film? Yeah, again, that came from the from the early years. My dad, my dad was a huge film buff. Um, and shit, next time you come out to LA, I gotta show you the garage. The garage is all different now. I wanna show you like my film collection and shit. Oh, yeah, he gotcha. was always a big, a big film buff. And you know, I didn't I didn't grow up with my dad um as much. Like I like early on, I didn't see him that much. And then once I hit like middle school, high school, I got to see him like, you know, a couple times a month. <clears throat> But all we did was watch movies, watch movies, watch TV, and it that's kind of how we bonded. And so he even got into his acting bag a little bit. He did a little background on uh on uh, the wire, you know, which is shot in Baltimore. We was in DC, so he 
So for me, and this is and this is why I like exposure is so important, bro. With the property, right? My grandma exposing me to that to that idea. With yeah. the TV and film, my dad exposing me to that idea. Exposure is so important because I ain't know nobody who was doing film. You know what I'm saying? Growing up, like I ain't know no like what is that, right? The fact that this man was so into it that he was driving to Baltimore to do background work on this TV show on HBO just sparked my mind. Like, oh, okay, that, that's the thing. And I've always been a storyteller, like whether it was music or books or TV and film, I, that's me, I'm a storyteller. I wrote my first graphic novel at, or not graphic novel, comic book at, in second grade, like like no bullshit, you know what I'm saying? Like I've always been a storyteller. And um, so I guess those two pieces, that, that's, that storytelling mind, coupled with the fact that I see my dad, that me and him really bonded over film and I connected with film so much, always just got, kind of gave me that passion. And you know, we was doing, I was doing the music thing and music is super dope. Um, music is kind of like an outlet for me. It's like, yeah. you know, it's, 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 not, it's not as much of a stretch, right? right? But like, as a creative, you always trying to get that high, right. that high of like creating, right? Like I always, I always talk about being an alchemist and like, once you create some shit from your brain to, and, and manifest it, that's a high you get, bro. Like the first time I recorded a song ever and I heard my voice on the track, that shit, the dopamine, right? Yeah. And so it's just like drugs, bro. Music was a gateway, gateway drug to me. I'm like, yo, I love creating music. How can I get even higher? Right. <laughs> and then like, if I create a movie, I'm going to be super smack. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be like, I'm going to be high as shit. And so that's kind of what I was, I was looking for, to be honest. And, um, and yeah, I was like, well, you know, I was in Dallas, we did the real estate shit. And I got to a point where I was speaking to passive income, like, which is also an, that's a whole nother topic of how passive income allows us to like tap into our purpose. Yeah. Because like once once I did that and I didn't have to work, I was like, oh well, shit, well, what do I want to like what do I want to I got to I got to reflect and sit down and be like, yo, what do I really want to do? Yeah, that freedom. It's like, yo, I, you had that freedom, right? And that's so important. And so uh, I was like, you know, I want to I want to I want to try my hand at film. And then I did my first joint, Hoop Dreaming, which I shot in Dallas, and then for, you know. The rest, the rest we'll get into. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, facts, man. So, you know, music and film go hand in hand, bro. So I think a lot of our conversation is going to be going back and forth between. For sure. Music, um, and, and the TV and film. So, you know, just like you said, you shot Who's Dreaming in Dallas. Um, and you also doing, you was also pursuing music in Dallas, bro. So kind of tell us, because you've been in, you know, uh, Baltimore, D.C., Dallas, now L.A. Kind of tell us, like, Oklahoma, too, because when you're creating music, how does that affect, you know, how does the music, how is the music affected by where you're at at certain time points? You know what I'm saying? So how was mm. it different from when you were in Dallas to now when you create your project when uh, the Empire Strikes Back when you're in LA? What's like the difference? Yeah, man. So <clears throat> the big, it's, it's actually a really big difference because I, I had never, I've never been a solo artist until now, right? Like I, since high school, uh, you know, I've been rapping for a long time, like doing music and people, like you said, people, there's so many things there that people don't know all the things, right? So sometimes shit surprises them, like, oh shit. Like when I when the first joint came out, when Return of the Jedi came out, like the people out here in LA were so much, they were so shocked. They were like, you know, to them it was like, oh, Nick's like trying trying that, right? But it's but it's actually good. And it's like they don't know that I actually been writing music way longer than I've been writing film. You know what I'm saying? And like practicing that. And um, and so since high school, I've always been in a group. You know, in high school, it was a group of us, and then we transitioned into a duo, and I've never been a solo artist. So in Dallas, and in Oklahoma, and um, even in D.C., like, the creative process was, is just much different. It was like, a co it was a constant collaboration of, of me and my, and, my, and my partner, trying, you know, coming up with what we collectively enjoyed, right? Out here in L.A. was the first time, there's a couple of things, it was the, it was the first time that I got to just speak my mind and what I wanted to do. That's, that's, that's Yoda in the background, my fault. <laughs> um, got big. But, yo, Yoda's huge, bro. I'm about to put it on um, but, but it was the first time I got to like, get, I'm gonna put this man, you mind if I put him outside real quick? Yeah, 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 yeah. Put him outside. Yeah. Nah, bro, but it was the first time that I got to, um, that I got to just do what I wanted to do, right? And kind of have, it was just complete 100% control of my artistry. So that was a big difference. Also, the vibe is different. Like, me being out here in LA, 
like my music before was um I, I feel like now it's a little more uh it's a little more swaggy now you know what i'm saying like i i, I feel like i'm kind of talking my shit now and i think that's i mean i think that's just the process of like life too like where i'm at now it's like yo i'm shit i'm doing things i never imagined i do you know what i'm saying so i can speak to that whereas before it was much more of like the, the struggle rap and it still is a little bit of that because i'm still painting the picture of how i grew up in my city Thanks. But I'm also able to talk my little bit of shit, you know. What I'm saying like three thousand dollar boots, these Alexander Queens. Yeah. I ain't never own. I ain't never own a pair of three thousand dollar boots. You know what I'm saying? And so now that I do, that shit sound cool as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, so like now I'm able to like say shit like that and 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 actually mean it though. You know what I'm saying? Like, like and I think it comes with a different intensity because even still, you know, guys like us, we always like there is no stopping. There's always another level. And so okay. it's still, I'm still like hungry. You know what I'm saying? So it's still like, I, I can talk, kind of talk my shit. I can kind of swag it out, but it's a different type of hunger. And it, like I said, this is just the process of life. I feel like every, every as we grow up, we're going to constantly like see things clearer and clearer and clearer. And we always think, yo, I see it now. And yeah. then, you know, in, in, in a couple of years, you're like, oh, I didn't see it then. I, I see it now. And it, and it just keeps happening. And so that's kind of how I feel now. I feel like probably for the first time since the last time I thought it, like the shit is clear and I can see like, yo, I'm gonna really do this. Like I'm gonna really do the, I'm gonna really do everything that I ever imagined I do. You know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of the difference, just just the experience and just, you know, the vibe and the success I've seen now and being able to reflect that in my music and have it be an inspiration. Like I felt like before, you know, you know, it's a little bit, I feel like my music is much more inspirational now because I can I can speak to things that I'm doing and, and that I've seen and where I've come from. And yeah. because I've had a little bit of a trajectory now, people can listen back and be like, damn, like, that's yeah. dope that, like, I can do that too. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Like, you, you've reached certain goals already, so now you can talk about, you know what I'm saying, to come up for sure. Man, but, you know, as a creative, man, I feel like, you know, with TV, film, music, it's, a, it's all an outlet, right? But, it's just different mediums. So how do you, mm -hmm. I guess, how do you switch off in your storytelling, right? So like writing yeah. music is, is one thing, you know what I'm saying? But like when you're writing a script, that's another thing. So for, for, for somebody yeah. who's never written a script or written a, a, a lyric or a verse, like where, what's the difference? And where your mind frame when you're like, right, I'm gonna lock in and write these verses for this album or right, I'm gonna lock in and write this script for this project? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, it's it, man, that's actually a great question. The thing that the thing that tied it, because like I, like I said, I hadn't done I hadn't done music in like maybe over five years, right? The thing that kind of the thing that actually did that for me that let me like kind of tap back in. I just did a film I worked on where I actually wrote the lyrics for the film. It was a rap film. It's called Decipher. Okay. Um, right now it's on it's on HBO. I actually wrote the lyrics for the film and I wrote the title track for the film. And so doing that, this was. So it was 2019 doing that is what really bridged it for me. I'm like, oh shit, like I'm out here doing film and I'm, but yet I'm back writing lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> like I'm doing film, but I'm back writing lyrics and the film did so well and it's doing well. Like I said, it just, it just got acquired by HBO. I'm like, that's the thing that got my mind back into like, let me, let me see if I can, you know, do this again. Let me see if I can write these lyrics again. And so as far as switching off and on, um, it's an Amazon dude. I hope he don't come in the <laughs> come in the yard because uh, <laughs> you gonna have a, a rude awakening. Um, but to your to your question, it's interesting because what I found is that writing writing music helped me with writing film. When I started film school at USC, the one thing that I heard from everybody universally, whether it was the professors or my classmates, was that my dialogue was so good. So yo, the dialogue is so crisp, like it's so crisp. And I know for a fact that came from the the, the mind the, the mind of constantly writing lyrics because I'm when, when writing lyrics you have to like get across a message it's like a tweet right like you got to get across a message with very precise words exactly. and so with dialogue I was very good at that getting across a message and an emotion with very precise words and so when I switched back I started writing film and then I got back into writing the music I realized that like I'm doing things now in my music. That are that are film writing techniques, right? right? So like an <clears throat> an example of that is like, you know, what they call like a plant and payoff, like where you like you know they do it in comedy, like you you plant something and then you you like a joke, right? Like you plant something, you pay it off later. I'm now doing that in my music too, or callbacks where I'm like, 
doing different reframes, you know, for, for free courses. And it's like, you know, they kind of, like you said, they go hand in hand and I'm able to use tools in both to kind of like enhance both of them. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's cause it's, and then also it's the type of rapper I'm, I, I am cause I'm a storyteller anyway, you know what I mean? So like the, the, when me kind of like practicing and learning and getting better at the craft of writing scripts, I'm becoming a better storyteller. You know what I'm saying? So when I get back into the music, it just helps me like write a, a sharper verse and tell a and tell a crisp, you know, a crisper story. And like I said, and, and vice versa. So they definitely go hand in hand. But the the thing I liked about your question was the thing that that really got me back into it was the fact that I found myself writing lyrics for TV and film. And I was like, yo, it it just got my mind kind of like juiced again. It was like, yo, I could I could do this. I could still write lyrics. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so at that point, and especially this point in your career, bro, what what do you think? Um, not what do you think? What are you trying to get? Uh, what do you want the audience to take from this project, right? When they listen to the Empire Strikes Back, what do you want them to take from it? And what do yeah, you, you want them to know from you as well? It's a great question, bro. Um, Empire Strikes Back is very much like uh, a release of like frustration. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it's frustration for a lot of different things. And like, like I said, we're always constantly trying to get to that next level. And no matter what industry you're in, there's going to be gatekeepers, right? And so. <clears throat> You know, for me, Empire, the, the whole shit, like the return was just like, it was what it was like, yo, I'm, I'm kind of back. And so for the Empire Strikes Back, it was me stepping into the role of the villain, much like the, much like the film, like the Star Wars, you know, series. It was like, okay, the Empire is the, is the villain. I was putting myself, that's why I was a little darker than, than the return. I was putting myself in the shoes of the villain and being like, what am I upset about? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, what do I want to target about what I'm doing? And it's definitely like a frustration of like, yo, Basically, I'm dope as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm so I'm so so dope. This is what I'm doing. This is who I am. This is where I come from. And you know, people are gonna have to have to reckon with that <laughs> at some point. Like I'm gonna be basically. Like I'm saying I'm gonna be I'm gonna be a force. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a force to, to be reckoned with. And for me, that's kind of what I want people to take away from from the strike back. Like, yo, this this kid is really dope. Like he's he's an artist really, you know what I'm saying? Like he can, he, yeah. he can, he, he can do it. Like he, the way I put these words together, I want people to be able, and you know, I don't really know who my audience is, you know, like I, I, I like to think it's, you know, I like to think it's the people that grew up in my city for sure. Cause that's the, that's the, those are the pictures I'm painting. And it's also like the people I'm meeting now and I'm kind of bridging this gap because, and that's, I'll be honest, bro. It's funny. Cause you know, I'll be, I'll be, I'm gonna be hunting with you. I ran into a, you know, you run into people in the film industry where it's like, some of these people like grew up in Hollywood or they, you know what I'm saying? They, for everybody from different places. And it's like, people now, it's not a lot of people out here from where I'm, you know what I'm saying? Where we from, where we from? And it's like, you kind of got to be like, yo, like <laughs> y'all gotta, you know what I'm saying? Y'all gotta show a little, little respect. Not, not because, not because of of me. I think you just have to respect people in general. And sometimes you run you run it. Obviously, you are gonna run into that in Hollywood. People don't want to respect you because of whoever they think they are. And yeah. but I'm not that type of I'm not that type of person. Like I'm a real I'm a real dude. So it's like, yo, I think one of my first lines is like, that's why I treat you all the same with mutual respect. But when a nigga flex and make me want to shoot you in your neck, like that's what, that's real. It's like you meet people and they act they act kind of weird. And I get it's a Hollywood thing, but I'm from a place where like you don't just disrespect people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's a lot of that. It's a lot of, it's a lot of emotion. It's a lot of frustration. And I just want people to, to listen to it and be like, man, like ultimately this kid's got talent and this kid, this kid, like, you know, he should be taken serious. I guess it's, it's all, it's a long roundabout way to say that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. And did you, I'm sure there's a reason behind it, but did you, what is your reason behind it? So like the turn of the Jedi Empire Strike Backs, the, the Star Wars name and reference, what, is that why is that done purposely? So talk to me about yeah, that. for sure. Um, the thing I really liked about Star Wars was this duality of, of like for me it all it, the idea of the Force and the dark Force, you yeah. know, and the and the and the light Force. It was always this duality of good and evil for me. Okay. And you can hear a lot of this in my music too. It's a lot of like biblical references, stuff like that. My my grandfather was a pastor, and I kind of grew up. I didn't really grow up in the church, but I grew up around the church, if that makes sense. Like I would always help him, you know, pick up members of his congregation for Bible study, or I would help him even type up his programs for, you know, Sunday service. Um, and so 
I, and then, you know, one of my biggest influences is probably DMX. It's probably my, my biggest influence. And so, DMX, and DMX is, you, bro, same, bro, is Dark and Hell is Hot was my favorite, is my all time favorite album, bro. Like, that's the shit. I remember my dad playing as dark, dark and Hell is Hot when I was a kid. And for some reason, I really gravitated towards DMX. Like, I felt his emotion and I felt his, like, Ashy, you know what I'm saying? The, bro, that shit, it just, it just made me feel. It made me feel, right? And so this idea of like good and evil, I feel like it's so repre represented by Star Wars in such an interesting way, because we all have this this kind of struggle, and I feel like I do too. And again, it has a lot to do with we, you know, our products of being products of our environment. I know a lot of niggas who, who, you know, they didn't have the exact same outcome that I did, and it's like we grew up in the same place, and it's this is this this pull between good and evil. I tell people all the time, like I'm so thankful that um that um that I try to be a righteous person as righteous as I can I can be because if I wasn't if I went the other way I'd really be the it'd be really bad in the other way you know what I'm saying like in the other direction so I don't know it's something about that that struggle between good and evil that that kind of attracted me as far as Star Wars and so um yeah I kind of took that I kind of took that a minute you know a long time ago my name had been Ben Kenobi for, for forever <laughs> and and um and it just yeah, and I kind of, and that's that's that was like the genesis of it. Like, yeah, damn, this 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 idea between good and evil. I see that in myself. You know what I'm saying? And and constantly trying to be as righteous as possible. Um, just like the ultimate Jedi, Ben Kenobi. You know what I'm saying? And so that's kind of where it came from. And then it was just so 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 fitting to name the first project the Return of the Jedi because it was me. Right. You know, it was me stepping back out. It was just it was just so fitting. Right. And similarly, it was so fitting to name the second joint. The Empire Strikes Back because it was my, you know, it was it just it just worked so well, yeah. Um, and so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of where it came from. And I ain't gonna tell them what the what the next joint is, but there will be a next joint, a <laughs> three, three part joint. So awesome. get ready. Yeah, definitely gotta get ready, man. So I want to talk on something real quick that you said. So people torn between good and evil. You know, what I'm saying like part of our environment, we could have easily swayed to the left, but but we did. Mm -hmm. What do you think mm -hmm. about that underlying factor for a lot of people that causes them? to go left instead of going right. You know what I'm saying? I, bro, I think about that all the time. I really do because, and the reason I do, because I'm like, yo, we could bottle that shit. You know what I'm saying? And give it to all of these lower niggas. Like, that'd be so dope. I think about that all the time. What is the thing, right? And like, the one thing I keep coming back to is like, yeah, man, the, the people, the, the mentors that you had in your life early on. Like, again, for me, my grandma, right? She tried to instill some shit in me. My seeing my dad try to have a creative outlet um, and my grandfather, those are the three people. That, I mean, obviously you got your, your mom, like my mom is my, your mom is your mom, but those three people in particular, my really, really more so my grandparents, like I think they always tried to like tell me, hey, be the, one, they encouraged the hell out of me, right? Like, Nick, you're going to be great. Nick, you're going to be the, like, you're yeah. going to do it, son. You, you special, son. They, they would tell me I was special all the time. You know what I'm saying? And it's like one of these things which comes first, like, was I really special and they saw something? Right. Or was them constantly telling me I'm so special triggering me where I'm like, yo, I'm about to just, I, I am I am the one, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that is a, is a big part of it, which is why mentorship is so is so critical. You know what I'm saying? Because a whole nother part of me is like the education piece, right? And like doing that, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, work, working in the education system. And I think mentorship is so, so critical because we need that. If you don't got nobody telling, uh, you know, our, our young queens and our young kings that they're going to be special, they can easily go that other way. And yeah, man, that's the, that's the only piece I keep coming back to because like I said, and just like you, it's people you probably grew up on the same block. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes your same household, same, co you know, cousins. It's like, yeah. what was the, what was the, what was the one thing? And I think mentorship has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Now that's real, man. Cause it's, it's easy. It's easily able to sway at any point. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta have, gotta have something to keep you on track, bro. And I think for me, man, and no disrespect to anybody. I think for me, what it was, man, I used, I'm a people watcher, right? But mm -hmm. not, but in a, in a positive way, like I wonder what this person is going through in their life. You know what I'm saying? I wonder if they're thinking, mm -hmm. what I'm thinking, right? And when I watch people, I would see, I, I could see the depression in people's faces at jobs that they despise, right? Mm -hmm. But they had to mm -hmm. stay there just to, just to live. And I was like, man, I never want to be in that situation and I never want my family, my daughter, you know what I'm saying, to ever be in that situation mm -hmm. where they're waking up to go to a job they hate, doing something they hate, just to live, just to make it, not even really live, just to make it, pay bills. 
So right. you know, that was one of my things that I felt like, you know, kept me on uh, on a positive track because it's easy other ways I could have made money, but then it was like, all right, do I, 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 if I do that, can I do the time that comes with that? I'm not doing that time. <laughs> bro, facts, bro. That's a, bro, that's a great, great point because that's definitely the other side of it is seeing what not to do. Like, right. yeah, the positive influences are dope, but also seeing what not to do. Cause same, bro, like, me like seeing my mom struggle, you know, kind of put, lit a fire in me. Just like you said, it's just like, yo, I gotta, I gotta make sure that my family, my eventual family, is not, is not going through that. Same thing with the time. Seeing uncles, seeing how my, you know, some of my uncles' life lives turned out, who did a couple of bids, is like, I don't want that either. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, that's a, that's a great point. Seeing, seeing like the having the positive influences, but also having like the wherewithal to recognize. The, the pitfalls, you know what I'm saying? Like like learning from other people's, what do they say? It's like a saying, like, you know, you can learn from your your own mistakes or you can learn from other people's, I forget what the saying is, but. I'm exactly saying, I just can't put the words. I can't, I can't, I can't put the words <laughs> together, but but no, nah, you you completely right, bro. I, I agree with that 100%. Nah, facts, man. Um, Bro, so let's get into TV and film, because cause like I said, when you did Who Dreaming Here, you left, all I've been seeing is this, like everything just going up. <laughs> Everything's going up, bro. Like, yeah. I've been seeing the post with the complex offices, like. <laughs> You just been doing so much, bro. You got you got to fill me in, okay? So yeah, you moved to LA, bro. What's what's been going on, man? Like that's the yes. easiest. I'm not even gonna ask like a a deep question. We'll just tell me what's yeah. been going on. <laughs> Facts, yeah. So so it all it all it all happened it all happened in a cool cool way. So like we moved to LA with the intention to go to film school, uh, USC, which is the number one film school in the country. For sure. Got in, got into film school, which is which is perfect. Like that was that was like step one because I didn't come from a film background. I needed to learn a craft, and that's yeah. one thing for like that's another thing. It's like how music in like the you know the the, the mid 2000, 2010 where like it had a big boom where everybody started rapping. It became so accessible. Right. Film's the same way, you know. Now like it's becoming like the, the the thing, which is again that's really dope. Film is much different than music, and like there is a very 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 like particular craft that go that goes into it, and so. You know, I wanted to make sure I went to went to school and learn that craft. Um, did that, made a couple of shorts at, at school, met a lot of people, worked for, you know, worked for LeBron James for a little bit, which kind of helped me meet other people in the film industry, big so homies. You worked in, in, uh, uninterrupted? I did. I actually worked for Spring Hill, which is the okay. film arm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I worked for Spring Hill, which is the film arm. And I met, I mean, it's crazy, bro, because the guys I met, you know, I don't, I don't want to say I don't want to name say say their names, but the guys I met also all went to USC. You know what I'm saying? And like these are brothers who are like doing it at literally the highest level in the industry right now. And so being able to like again mentorship, being able to learn from them, and like just kind of see, see see how the pieces are put together, and just being that just being that environment mm -hmm. um, helped me kind of shape the path, right? Because I got to see their path and be like, okay, this is this is how this is how kind of how it's done. Um, and the next step for me was like having a, a really good short film, like, and being able to get into big film festivals like a BFF or Tribeca or Khan or all, all of these different things. So that's, that was the next thing I did. So at USC, my last year, I did my thesis film, it was called B. Okay. Did B, um, I did a few different things. I did B and then I also did the Cypher, which is the one that also really took off. B was my film um, and it did really well. We got into ABFF where I was featured as an emerging director, which is, you know, American Black Film Fest, typically in Miami. Of course, it was online this year. Right. Um, uh, did a bunch of festivals, did a, you know, Black Las Vegas Fest where I won uh, Best Short Film. Um, did, I just finished doing Diversity in Con, which is huge. Wish we could have went to France, but we, that was also online. Um, and so, Doing that film, I think it was like the next that next piece of the puzzle that got me like the looks from like, you know, execs at different companies or or what have you. The other piece of that is, you know, you got to write too. I'm a I'm a writer, so I wrote my first feature film. So my feature film in conjunction with this short film allowed me to like pitch to different production companies and execs. And so I just got my first feature film picked up by a company, uh, Mandalay Pictures. Uh, shout out to Jason Berman. Um, and so that's you know it's, it hasn't been announced yet. And it probably won't be announced for a little bit because, you know, we got to put the pieces together, got to get our producer attached, got to get our talent attached, got to get financing. But I'm super excited, bro, because that'll be my, it'll be my film, bro. Like you might be able to go to theaters and see my first feature film. Sound like the shit is crazy. Okay. And so, um, so been doing that. So, so that's the big thing. It's called We Were Born Kings. Okay. That's kind of like my my baby. 
and then, you know, in addition to that, with all these other pieces, just constantly writing, you know, writing pilots to TV shows and now pitching, pitching those. And like, you know, I had my very, me and my co-writer had our, our very first pitch yesterday. Oh, I told you, cause we were supposed to link, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had our, we had our very first pitch, um, yesterday, which was super dope to a company under Blumhouse, which I know, you know, Blumhouse. So it's like, you know, imagine if I fuck around and sell a TV show only a year out of being, you know, being out of film school, like it's crazy. So, right. so yeah, man, like long story short is, since who dream like and again who dreaming is the thing that allowed me to get into film school and bringing it all back to star wars george lucas the creator of star wars actually paid for me to go to film school you see what i'm saying like <laughs> like yes bro like that's what i'm saying you know he he's and i'm sure he's got like a committee i'm sure he's not just sitting behind the desk yeah. watching all these niggas films but but uh hoop dreaming along with like my story is the thing that allowed you know him to 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 help me you know give me this opportunity uh, so it all kind of came full circle how with the whole. With the, Lucas or how was how was that? Which one? It was a scholarship that he. Uh, yeah, he, it was a scholarship. Okay. Yeah, it's called the George Lucas Scholarship. Um, they only give it to about, you know, five students a year. Like it's very, very, it's very, very tough. And not to mention, my program only accept like sixty people every admission process. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it's, it's a really like narrow window, and I gotta, you know, I think again, my story you know, company with Who Dreaming, like Who Dreaming, that was my first film. And thankfully, it, you know, it did well. And, and also that shout out to people in Dallas who helped look out, you know what I'm saying? That shout out to like my guy Taylor Torrance, who now is over Full Cliff, that's my brother. And, you know, he he was a producer on on Who Dreaming. Um, and, uh, you know, Dallas film crew who helped me shoot it. Like it's people in Dallas who actually, my community there helped me make that, you know, what it was, which allowed me to do these other things. So I'm always thankful for that. Um, and yeah, bro, that allowed me to get to film school. Film school allowed me to meet who I needed to meet, gain the skills I needed to gain to like make the thing I need to make to be able to go to the next level, right? So it's like, again, it's all very intentional. Like, you know, we, we before we moved out here, we applied to film school, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy that I got in and Milana got in. Right. And, and then, um, yeah, bro, so that's what's been kind of happening now. It's like, all right, well, and, you know, the next thing is like, hopefully I do this feature film it ends up on Netflix or, you know, or some shit. And it's like, then it's, the, then it's the next thing, right? It's like, you know, it's like a Ryan Cougar who did Fruitville Station and then he doing Creed and then now he's doing Black Panther. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? It's like, I can see that for he's, you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, that's the type of shit that's like, that's the type of shit that I'm trying to, trying to do. And, it, and so it's just about being patient. You know what I'm saying? Seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, not getting burnt out, which thankfully I don't feel at all because and it's probably because like this is what i've always wanted to do like i've always wanted to just tell stories and so so yeah man I, I, that, that was another long answer but that's kind of yeah. that's kind of what's been going on <laughs> oh, and um this whole time up until now bro like these are these all projects like you're self-funding or like how are you getting these produced yeah so <clears throat> another great question who dreaming i maybe spent 200 bucks bro not even gonna, not even gonna hold you I spent like maybe 200 bucks. And, and again, it's because of the community. Right. Um, and, and, and it's, be, you know, it's because of the community. It's because of having a strong vision. Um, and this is why you got to do, you know, you spoke about it earlier, doing things at a, at a high level. Um, you know, everybody, you know, when you make your first film, it doesn't have, it doesn't have to be at a high level, but it, it certainly helps <laughs> because right. then, because then you can use that to, to help to like George Lucas, right? Like that committee saw that and was able to like, you can get people to help you along the way once you start once you start delivering on on things right and so um for b it was similar in that because people believed in me some people were willing to go in right so it was self-funded by me and uh co-ep okay. um the co-star in the film her name is Alyssa Tibbs. she um was she played the b's mom she played the role of sylvia in the film she went half on the film with me okay and it was because she believed in me you know what i'm saying so it's just like, but yeah, to, to, to answer your question, they are, so far they've been self-funded. Those have been like the two big projects. I did a few other short films in between um, that were also self-funded, but they definitely weren't at the level of like a B. Like B, I spent, you know, I spent a few grand and, um, you know, and it's, from there it's kind of, it's kind of went up, you know, uh, but, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's just one of those things, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's, that's crazy, bro. I'm, I'm so proud of you, my G. Like, <laughs> thank you. So, thank you, thank so you. Proud of you bro. Like I said, man, everything, everything you've done at a high level, music, film, uh, man, we didn't even get to talk about the education that you're working with the schools, the 
the the book Adventures of Yanni. Like, bro, it's just, yeah, it's so much, it's so much to you, man. Um, but but what I want to say is is I like to get deep into people's minds, right? Like, I I, I wanted to be a psychologist. I just couldn't do eight years of school, right? Yeah, yeah, so, facts. Same, yeah. actually. <laughs> so, Same, not, like, no lie. Yeah, so, so for me, man, I'm um, I'm just curious to know, like, everybody kind of has their first love, like, something that really makes them, that tick, that makes them beat, right? So when you wake up, what do you think of first? Is it, is it music or mm -hmm. is it film? That's a great question, bro. I'd have to say music. Mm -hmm. I'd have to I I'd have to say music is my first love and I think it's deeper than I think it's deeper than like music like then it's like rap then it's like hip hop mm -hmm. and then it's like culture right like I'm a product of hip hop culture first and foremost you know what I'm saying so like when you see all of these different things like all it's so dope now all of these like podcasts like whether it's the you know Joe Budden podcast or whether it's you know Breakfast Club or whether it's fucking you know uh nori with drinks like i'm a product of all of those things you know what i'm saying like i'm the, I'm the kid who, who like you know had a fucking earphones in the bed at night mm -hmm. listening to fucking terror squad right. you know like rant, you know what i'm saying like i was i was, I was a, i'm a super super product of of hip-hop culture and that's just a and that's just a part of me and so um that's probably what i what i think about like when i wake up like if I wake up in the middle of the night, unless I got unless I got a deadline, like I you know I have to get something done or I you know, but if like if there if there's nothing else that needs to be happening, I'm thinking I'm probably thinking about music and just thinking about maybe a a, a tough bar or I might you know peruse peruse YouTube for some beats or you know what I'm saying. Um, but music I think was like my music was definitely my first love for sure. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. That's awesome, man. <laughs> um, so I like to give insight for other people like maybe want to follow your path, bro. Like, I mean, you went to school for it. You took the, I don't want to say traditional route, but you took the, the best route to get you where you needed to be to learn your craft and be put in the room with the right people with landing you know, a job, you know, at Spring Hill Entertainment. But for those who doesn't have that opportunity or that access that wants to just yeah. pick, start writing the script, what advice, you know, what advice would you give to them? For sure. I would say, uh, one, I would say it's totally doable. You know what I'm saying? Like do that shit. Like you don't have to go to film school for sure. Right. Um, but, but try to do some type of learning, whether it's like, re like reading scripts is like one of the big things they'll say, like, you know, definitely read scripts. So you kind of know how to, how to write them and how to format them and shit. Um, read scripts, write movies, um, or I'm sorry, read scripts, watch movies. And, um, and and like try to find other resources online. You know, you got books like Save the Cat. There's a ton of books on like how to how to write a movie. Read those. Um, and yeah, Save the Cat. Okay. I think Save the Cat. I forget who was I forget the, the guy who wrote it. Um, but it's like one of the ones everybody like kind of. To be honest, I ha I haven't even read it. Like, you know, it, it, I, I really haven't. But it is known as one of those books that like if you are starting from from square one, like that's a good book to read um and oh and practice that's the other big thing like even me I, i've seen that i gotten i've gotten so much better just from practice like mm -hmm. if you want to write then then do it like write every day start with just writing like a three-page script like just a beginning middle and end and just just constantly do it constantly do it go shoot it you know what i'm saying like write it get it made and you just got to practice and it's gonna it's gonna take time it's not gonna happen overnight mm -hmm. um but you just gotta you just gotta do it and then again, mentorship, like that's the other thing, you know, try to find mentorship, reach out to people, whether it's through, you know, DMing on Instagram, you know, Clubhouse is super, super big, right? Like Clubhouse is a way to tap in with so many people right now. Um, maybe that's the way you meet somebody, you know what I'm saying? But just try to find a mentor, internship, like that's another big thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I said, that's what I did. That's how I got in at Spring Hill. In internship is, is, is huge, right? Um, so, yeah, man, I would say, I would say practice, do it. Mentorship um, are like the, the big things. And I think if you're doing that and you stay committed to that diligently, like it, uh, it'll happen. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, man. And, and overall, bro, how do you plan on tying everything you're doing together? Like if you could say like, if you could wrap it all up and put it in a boat and package it and give it to somebody, how do you package, yeah. how do you package everything you do uh, for your audience? For sure, bro. Like that's a, another great question. Like, 
I definitely see myself as like, so like Ryan Coogler is somebody I kind of look at as like a, because like even with um, Judas and the Black Messiah, like mm -hmm. if you look at that soundtrack, Ryan is an EP on the soundtrack with Hit Boy and like, yeah. you know, whoever else, like, right. And he's also a guy who comes from like hip hop culture that he don't rap, but that type of thing of like basically being a Hollywood producer who's able to do things like that, who's able to EP the soundtrack and who's able to like, I want to I want to kind of bridge this 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 hip hop and, and movie culture um, similar to like how Spike or John Singleton did back when they first stepped on the scene. You know what I'm saying? Like Spike was one of the first guys to, or if not the first to, you know, throw a rapper as a star of a film, like with Ice Cube and Boys in the Hood. And so it's sim that's the type of shit that I kind of want to I kind of want to do is I want to I want to be a very prolific Hollywood producer and you know, I want to have, you know, another, another example is like the, the, the Diddy's and the J's, like these guys who are moguls, like as far as package and everything, like I see myself kind of being that, that mogul. So like having TV and film, being able to do music, um, having a publishing company, you know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. having the talent, talent agency, even like, I want to, I want to have kind of this conglomerate, gotcha. um, and, and just spearhead it. And ultimately at the end of the day, you know, we entrepreneurs. So it, you know, for me, I want to bring other people on, right. To start like running some of these things and I could do other shit. Right. Cause like, <laughs> it's like, like, yeah. let me, let me, let me try to put these pieces together and I could put people on to run it, to, to operate it. And then I'm off doing the next, the next thing. Right. And so, yeah, man, that's, 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 that's kind of the vision. It's like, how do I, how do I build this, this conglomerate? How do I build this, this kind of like this, this mogul, kind of how do I become this mogul kind of figure who's who's able to operate in all these different realms seamlessly mm -hmm. and so that's 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 pretty much it if that answers that question <laughs> oh, for sure bro and I know this is kind of different but have you ever thought about because I mean I think this is more like actually like composing music but I mean you have I know you have the ear and the talent to even facilitate that but like scoring films and you know what I'm saying bro it's so funny you said it so I literally just um I literally just got brought on for a music supervisor role for right. for a film, a short film um, that's going to be shot this year. I actually have my first meeting with with that crew next Friday. But exactly to your point, and this comes from just being that that hustle. Like yo, I'm trying to do everything. Like people be like, I can imagine some people be like, "Oh, you about to be music supervisor?" Like I'm a writer director, right? And they're like, "Yo, you about to be a music supervisor on a short film?" But to your point. Is is it just another skill that I can I can show I can I can do this right like I have it I can put together a, a project which honestly is another reason why I wanted to do the EPs I did was also just to be able to have it's like a it's like a calling card right so like I can go to somebody and be like yo I could put together an album like here, here or you know what I'm saying I could I could I could put together music no problem I can create a song no problem and so that's gonna allow me to do things like get this music supervisor gig that I got at, on this film that seems like it might be a, a really really dope project. And again, similar to like what Ryan did with uh with you know the, the soundtrack for Judas and the Black Messiah, or even the soundtrack for Black Black Panther. I don't know if Ryan was credited as the EP on Black Panther soundtrack, but you know, I've heard him talk, he was extremely instrumental instrumental in putting that together. So it was the same type of thing where it's like, okay, if I get into that bag too of starting to like, because like I said, I already did. I just wrote the I just wrote the the, the title track for the cipher, right? She's on HBO now, you know what I'm saying? So it was like I could I could do that. And it's just all these different bags. And then the, the next thing, the next thing, like, you know, the next one, I'm gonna just get the gig and I'm gonna tap somebody else. I'm gonna get a Nate G or a Bando and be like, son, mm. I got this project. These are the songs they need. Here's the budget. Y'all go to the studio and put it together. And I'll, you know, and I'll just kind of facilitate it. But the, the, the goal is to get into positions where we, where everybody's able to like, you know what I'm saying? Where we could keep this shit going, right? And so, nah, that's a, that's a great question. And that's kind of what I'm, what I'm trying to, trying to do in a way that's like, in a way that makes sense, right? Cause I don't want to take my eye off the ball, right. um, but in a, in a way that like is manageable. And I feel like doing doing my own music and then doing like a gig like I'm about to do, those are things that are manageable that can also like allow me to get the, the, the bigger role when I need to. Shit, my feature film, who you think gonna EP that soundtrack on my feature film? You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and then you know, when, when, the, when a guy like Jason Berman, who's the EP, when he's like, you can do that. I got all these things to show. Like, yeah, I can, I can do that too. You know what I mean? And then from there is up, you know? Let me ask you this too. When you, when you do multiple things for a project like that, right? Do you get 
different bags for each, even though it's your film. Yeah. You get, that. get all the bags. Oh yeah. All <laughs> get all the bags, bro. Because you know, it's all it's all a it's all a budget, right? So it's like you got your itemized budget for the producer, the writer, director, music supervisor, you know, soundtrack. All that money, if I'm if I'm in if I'm slotted in those roles, all that money come through me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah, that's real. That's real. You know what I'm saying? So it's like give me that, give me that, give me that soundtrack budget and let me and let me rock it. Let me finesse it. You know what I'm saying? And um, so yeah, bro, you, you know, and again to your point, your, your you know, early point, you gotta make sure you're doing it at a you don't want to jeopardize your own work, right? Like if you don't want to do it, you don't want to overwhelm yourself, but if you can certainly do it get you get you get all of those bags you know yeah. what i'm saying like so <laughs> yes yeah, that's motivated me man <laughs> that's what's up bro yeah, let's get it but um but, but to tie everything back in bro to 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 end this interview bro i want to know yeah. from the empire strikes back bro i want to know uh your favorite record on there and then tell me why and then your favorite four bars it doesn't have to be on the same song but mm. bars on that project that's a good one um Favorite record. My favorite record might be, I'll be honest, because I'm because I'm just a super like bar nigga. I, I probably just like the strike back, the intro, just because <laughs> just cause it just cause I'm just rapping and like, you know what I'm saying? And it's 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 the rawest, it's probably like the song with the rawest emotion. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know, bro. I like no I like them. All right, I'm kinda now. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna be a little extra and kind of tell you what I like about each one. <laughs> but I like the strike back probably probably the most. Nosferatu I really fuck with because of like what I'm doing with my voice and like I'm trying something different. Right. Face I really like because of the the braggadociousness of it. Like we kind of talked about, it's kind of it's kind of swaggy. Yeah. Rage probably has my my favorite boss. Um, the very first boss of Rage is like um, we would come home to the fiends in our building. Mama said, let's wait outside and let her finish stealing. That shit turned me to a villain. I'm working through my trauma, trying to make it to these millions. Dripping in designer. What is it, dripping in designer? That's, you know, something, something. But th that that part right there, really just that we would come home to fiends in our building. Right. Mama said, let's wait outside and let her finish stealing. That shit turned me to a villain. Yeah. That that right there, bro, I love it because it's, it's so real. And it's so like, the way I put it together was just like, when it, when I wrote, I was like, yo, that shit is hard because that's how I feel. That shit, you know, those, those experiences as a child has residual effect as me as a, as an adult. Right. And like, I ain't even gonna lie, bro. The fucking uh, house alarm went off last night. I went right under the bed, like quick as shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you know, Milan, like, yo, chill. Like it's just something they're probably to win or something, but like that, that type of shit is like, yeah. I love that that just being as real as possible. So that's probably my favorite, like favorite boss. And then Shine, Shine, I think is just a is just a cool little it's cool little outro. It's just like I think people have really gravitated towards Shine because it's like this this kind of chill, relaxed, relaxed vibe. Um, but it's another one where I'm just kind of giving bars. And um, so yeah, man, that's so yeah. I would say the Strike Back favorite, and then on Rage, those those opening four bars are my my, my favorite. That's what's up, man. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't leave without saying congratulations to the home team, to the new father. You know what I'm saying? Man, like it's a blessing. Two it's girls, blessing. bro. You got two queens, bro. Like I'm a girl dad myself, bro. So you know, anything you yeah. need, bro, holler at me. I've been through <laughs> it. <laughs> I've been through it. I'm still going through for, it, bro. So for sure, for just, sure. It's another level to our friendship now, bro. Now we can bond over fatherhood and raising these queens, bro. So. Absolutely. And I want to thank you, bro, just for, for just always being there, being super, super supportive, being super, super solid, bro. And always, and you know, it's, it's good to have, like, it's good to have other niggas around you. That's the inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Like, because then we can all kind of like, you know, iron sharp and iron type shit. And so I appreciate you for your hustle and your grind. And, and like, I, like and he, I remember when we did the, when, the, when we did the cosign joint and you asked me to like, who do I cosign? Like, yeah. Like it sounds cheesy, but you would be you you would have to be on that list because it's only a few it's only a few people. I don't want to say only I ain't trying to shit on people, but it's only a, it's you know it's like that circle of people that you know that's like yo these 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 men and women really inspire me, and you definitely one of those for me. So I appreciate you too, brother. I don't likewise, man. I, and I gotta say real quick too, man. It was a Rick Ross interview with the Breakfast Club. He said uh, he said you ain't supposed to be in competition. But you're gonna be like, man, if your homie uh, what he said if your homie got a barbershop. You know what I'm saying? Act like that's your barbershop. You homie got a color line, act like that's your color line, bro. 
when you posted a couple couple months ago that uh Mercedes commercial, oh. <laughs> I was telling people like, yo, like my homie got like that's like me in that commercial too. Like my homie got a whole commercial with Mercedes, bro. Like I was like, yeah. bro, I'm a big amp and proud of you. Like, yo, like that's a, that's a that's a team. that's a win for the team. You know it's a win for the it's a it's a win, bro. It's so it's a win. Like you said, if one of us win, we all win. You know, and like that's a whole that's a whole another combo. The whole like <laughs> that's a whole like the whole acting and modeling shit. That's a whole another like combo, bro. But I, but no, nah. I, like I feel like we got to do those. Like you know how a vlog they got like that one person they go to like all the time for like you know. Kind yeah. of, <laughs> I feel like we got to have those those frequent conversations, bro. Like let's do it. Tap in. And let's do it. Definitely the part two, man. So many more layers and. Other thing we could talk about, bro. But um, but yeah, man, definitely a, a win for the team, bro. And you know, you always got our support. So anything you do, we co-sign, bro. So I salute you, man. And you know what I'm saying? Tell Milan it's all love and you know, congrats yeah. to y'all, bro. And keep inspiring the masses, man. Keep inspiring us yeah. and motivating us all, bro. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it so much, KG. Thank you again, bro. Right, bro. And yeah, man, let's 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 stay in touch and like you said, keep doing it, man. It's much love. Not for sure. Likewise, bro. You be safe out there, man. And I look forward to seeing the continued growth, my G. You too, brother. Peace. Peace, man. Hey, guys. What's good? Thanks for supporting Cosign Magazine by watching this video. If you really enjoy this content, please subscribe, like, comment, and share.